So hi, everybody. Um, my name is Melissa Ng. I am the founder of Luma Cluster, and I create intricate masks. And uh, I, I also make historically inspired fantasy armor and wearable art. So uh, usually the first question I get asked is, how the hell did you get started in something like that? Um, and the funny thing is, uh, so I'll try to be really brief about my background. Um, I, I don't have an art background. I don't have a design background. I, I, I dabbled in art most of my life since childhood, you know, drawing here and there. Uh, so a lot of people, when they see this, they must think, oh, you must be some sort of prodigy or something, um, which is very uh, flattering. But, you know, my, my background is actually in public relations and media. But what I always wanted to do all my life um, was to be an artist, but societal pressure said, being an artist is a bad idea, <laughs> right? Because we always hear that. You don't want to be that starving artist. But I was like, uh, at a very low point in my life, I said, but I want to. I still want to, but I, I tried all these things. Nothing stuck. But one day at a Maker Fair in 2013, I saw 3D printing for the first time. And I just thought, OK, well, you know, I have to pay bills. I can't waste my time. How can I give this a shot? to see if I could do something with it. This was not easy. And believe it or not, this was my first 3D model in my 3D print. But let me just say that this piece, um, I gave myself a three-month ultimatum to learn how to 3D model on Blender. Mind you, I cut a lot of stuff out. I just tried to find the things I needed to learn to try to get to an end goal. But in the future, after that, I, I went back to really build a foundation. But I wanted to see what I could do, because I had all these ideas in my head, but all the different mediums I tried in the past really weren't satisfying for me. But for some reason, 3D printing was one of those things that made me think, maybe this is something I feel like I can continually grow with. And this was that starting point. I didn't know where I was going to go from there. But from this mask, I actually won a competition, and I showed it in a gallery. And that was all within, I think, the beginning of 2014. After that, one opportunity led to another. I, these were, uh, this is a collection of some of my earliest designs. And um, to be clear though, these were very deliberate choices. I chose masks, I chose these sort of, I experimented with design that I thought that people would like, but I also worked very hard to find a sweet spot in what I thought I loved and what other people would love. And that is a hard question to ask and answer yourself, for yourself. Um, because I, whenever I do an interview or I tell people this story, people like to romanticize it and say, boom, she just knew it and she knew what she was doing. But it was, it was a very difficult uh, process for me to explore because before 3D printing, the um, decision to make that mask, you know, it was years of experimenting and eliminating a lot of different mediums I didn't enjoy. Um, and 3D printing just happened to stick. But that wasn't really where I wanted to stop. I wanted to explore how else you could explore. And I noticed the one thing that was really amazing about 3D printing was the ability to break down really complex things and explore it for yourself. So one part was design, but I, I was also very much in love with armor. Also very male dominated um, and initially not very welcoming to me. Uh, someone who, who started out with an interest in, in fantasy and video games. So this is actually one of the first fantasy armors I designed. But um, I realized I needed to take it a step further for people to take me seriously, because a lot of people didn't take me seriously in those early stages. So I uh, actually went out of 3D printing and to start learning the foundations of armor. So these are actually all articulated. They, un they do follow the function and design of armor. I work with armor smiths, I work with arms and armor educators. So my point here is that while 3D printing is amazing, it also enabled me in a lot of ways to explore older practices in completely new ways. The fact that, you know, for example, a gauntlet, how, how many pieces do you think are in a gauntlet? <laughs> Anyone can guess? Someone say 70? A pair of gauntlets could have about over 60 or 70 pieces, yes. Um, and usually they can create, take maybe months to make traditionally. I'm not saying that it's still great to do it traditionally, but the, for learning purposes, it was also a great way for me to explore 
and allow me to really expand in a lot of new ways. But um, for this, you know, what 3D printing allowed me to do was build a lot more efficiency into my design process. So the funny thing about um, what I do is that the, the question I get from people is, one, do you actually do all this yourself? And two, um, I get re a lot of people reach out to me now either in film or entertainment, they often think I have a team because this design, this sort of work is very complex. And while I don't want to take away from the importance of having a team that you can trust, um, what I also think is important about or valuable in 3D printing is that it can allow you to do so much more and we shouldn't think of 3D printing as just the end result either. 3D printing has helped me improve my process in many ways. So these are not actually finished 3D printed pieces. 3D printing was involved in, for example, creating the 3D printed masters. I even use 3D printing in making the molds. So mold making alone can be very difficult, very expensive. But it was also finding new ways to use 3D printing, not in just creating the pieces, but the pieces to help create the finished product in different, different ways. Um, and that I could do with like myself and one other person because you know, it's, it's just being creative and finding ways that can make it work for you and not to see 3D printing as just the only thing to get you to an end goal. Um, and so 3D printing alone has been a very creative journey, not just in creating my art pieces, but just making a process that works for me as an independent artist because I feel like a lot of people get this feeling like if you get into 3D printing, usually you have to have some really crazy uh, complicated or uh, experience or background or you have to have a whole team. You're, but sometimes, like for me, I was just one person and I had a dream of being an, being an artist. And for me, 3D printing was that key to try something new and realize that I was much more capable than I realized and exploring something where I initially wasn't welcome. So this is just um, a few images of where you can see my work now. So I do have a lot of people who wear my work and uh, either for like entertainment purposes or photo shoots. And what I create is just like an intersection between costume and fashion. So this is just to give you an idea of uh, where my work is at this point. So you can see here, uh, these are armor pieces where they're you know combining with uh, a lot more modern fashion. Or you can see this is very high fantasy. But um, my interest is mainly making pieces of art where people can have form, function, and really just help them make their, their own fantasies a reality.